Hello my dear students once again we are back into another class of social science i hope all of you fine at home stay safe and shall we start we had completed the first unit in the last class and today we will be discussing the second unit of the textbook social and political life 2 the name of the unit is state government what does it mean the title state government means governments at state level do you understand our state is arunachal pradesh and there is government at the state level in arunachal pradesh that is the state government of arunachal pradesh so in this unit we will be discussing about state governments this unit has two chapters these two chapters will be covering some of the aspects of the state government so let's study the second chapter today this is the second chapter of the textbook and this is the first chapter of the second unit state government anyway let's come back the name of the chapter is role of the government in health do get me what does it mean let's have a quick introduction In a democracy, the government should work for people's welfare. Do you get me? In the last class, I said that democracy is the rule by the people, rule for the people, and rule of the people. In a democracy, there is a government elected by the people, and that government is ruling the people. But people is the most important thing in a democracy. Do you get me? Because democracy is the rule by the people, isn't it? And so. In a democracy, the government should work for people's welfare. People, this is the most important thing, and the government should work for people's welfare. Do you get me? Health is an important aspect of people's welfare. What does it mean? If there is no health, we have nothing, isn't it? So, health is an important aspect of people's welfare, and so the government has to work for. health of the people the government is working for people's welfare isn't it so the government has to ensure there is health for everyone the government has to guarantee good health facilities to all the people so in this chapter we study about role of the government in health today we will learn what government does and what it has to do today we will see what government does in health sector and the what government has to do to make health sector better today we will see it first of all let's try to understand the meaning of the word health what is health free of diseases if i don't have any disease i can say i'm healthy if someone doesn't have any disease we can say that he or she is healthy but is that the only meaning of health if we are free of diseases we are healthy but is there any other meaning for healthy we can see clean drinking water if there is health there should be clean drinking water if we drink polluted water we will not be healthy so for us to be healthy there should be clean drinking water there should be pollution free and human if there is pollution we won't be healthy so if we how to be healthy there should be pollution free and human and adequate food we should have adequate food if we don't have sufficient or adequate healthy food we will not be healthy so we should have adequate food then good living conditions our living conditions should be also good otherwise we won't be healthy. now do you have a clear picture of a healthy person a healthy person means not only a person who is free of diseases but he should be getting all these conditions if all these conditions are fulfilled only we will be healthy so in order to be healthy or in order to ensure there is health all these conditions should be satisfied do you get me now let's discuss about healthcare in india in india the condition of the healthcare system is 
we won't say no i won't say no let us see the condition of the healthcare system in india let's see whether it's good or bad at the end i will say whether it's good or whether it's bad so let's see the condition of healthcare system in india now first let's discuss the positive side india has the largest number of medical colleges in the world what does it mean if we take all the countries of the world then india has the highest number or the largest number of medical colleges then india produces so many doctors what does it mean there are so many doctors from india or in india okay then there are many hospitals clinics in india there are world class hospitals there are many hospitals in india and some of the hospitals in india are world class hospitals then india is the fourth largest producer of medicines what does it mean if we take the whole world or all the countries of the world then india is the fourth largest producer of medicines do you get me and one more thing india is a big exporter of medicines what does it mean india produces so much medicine and india exports india makes so much of money by exporting medicines do you get me so these are the positive sides of the healthcare system in india now let's discuss the negative side of the healthcare system in india doctors are urbanized what does it mean i said in the positive side we saw that there are many doctors in india india produces so many doctors but here it says doctors are urbanized it means most of the doctors are in the cities what does it mean that means in the villages or in the village areas or in the rural areas there are no doctors because most of the doctors are in urban areas or in the cities so doctors are urbanized rural india is not healthy that means rural india or villages in india are not healthy because there is no proper healthcare system in the villages there are no doctors there are no hospitals there are no clinics there are no laboratories in the villages then tuberculosis malaria and other communicable diseases what does it mean india in india there are so many people dying every year due to tuberculosis malaria and other communicable diseases communicable diseases means diseases which spread due to communication or due to contact corona is spreading due to contact now like that spreading diseases are called communicable diseases in india lots of people die due to tuberculosis malaria and other communicable diseases then no clean drinking water to everyone there should be clean drinking water no do we drink polluted water we drink only clean water no so clean water should be available to all isn't it but in india clean drinking water is not available to everyone then half of the children in india are undernourished what does it mean we are children you are children no and your parents provide you with healthy food isn't it and children should get healthy food but then if you get healthy food then you are nourished but if you are undernourished you won't be healthy then what is the meaning of undernourishment if we don't have sufficient food we are undernourished now listen half of the children in india are undernourished so these are some of the negative side of or the negative aspects of the healthcare system in india now let's go through two stories these stories will provide us a clear idea about the healthcare system in india the first one is a story of hakim said hakim said is a person from west bengal one day he was traveling by train and he fell down from the train on the way and there was severe injury to his head 
he was bleeding and there was severe injury on his head uh, it was very severe it was very critical and he was taken by some of the people to the hospitals uh, for in the beginning for the first time he was taken to a government hospital and he did not get admission in that government hospital that means he was not taken or he was not received in that hospital because there was no bed there and they took him to another hospital and there also he was not admitted because there was no sufficient technology that hospital was lacking technology to treat him it was also a government hospital and after that the people took him to four or five government hospitals and he was taken to seven or eight government hospitals in total and he was not admitted anywhere at last he was taken to a private hospital he was admitted there but the cost of the treatment was very high now let's come back to the second story the second one is the story of aman and ranjan ranjan is the child of a rich person and aman is the child of a poor person both of them were classmates one day both of them got viral fever the daddy of ranjan took ranjan to a private hospital the hospital was looking like a four star or five star hotel because it was a private hospital the reception was very nice there was music in the reception and the environment inside the hospital was very chilling very nice to the mind and he was treated by the doctor the nurse behaved very pleasantly to him the doctor was also a fine person he was given so many what they asked him to take so many tests he conducted he took all those all those tests and at last the doctor said to him that it is just a viral fever he was undergoing lot of tests and at the end the doctor said to him you are just having a viral fever he gave tablets he went home and he was fine now let's go to the story of aman the story of ranjan i said now now let's go to the story of aman aman was also having a viral fever he was the child of a poor person and he was in the beginning he was not taken to the hospital because he had no money his father had no money to take him to a private hospital so he had to go to a government hospital in the government hospital if he need to take medicine or if he need to consult a doctor we have to stand on a long queue isn't it so amin was not at all well so amin's father said that it's better not to go to the hospital because we have to stand on a long queue but at last his father took amin uh, to a government hospital they have they had to stand on a long queue for hours and after two or three hours they uh, got the opportunity to, to consult the doctor the doctor asked something to amin and the doctor said to come back after three days he was uh, he had to undergo a test and after the test the doctor told him that to come back after three days after 3 days amin's father took amin again to the hospital he had to stand on a long queue again he consulted the doctor now the doctor was a different person and the doctor uh, what the doctor read all the documents and he gave medicine at last he had to stand on a long queue in front of the medical lab he got the medicines he went home and he was very fine and the the hospital did not charge or the doctor did not charge much from amen the treatment of amen in that government hospital was very cheap compared to the treatment of ranjan in that private hospital the private hospital charged ranjan very high cost but 
Amin was charged only little in that government hospital. From these two stories, you have understood that there are two categories for two types of hospitals in the healthcare services. The first one is public and the second one is private. So public and private healthcare services. Let us try to understand the meaning of public and private healthcare services comparatively. Public healthcare services are run by the government. That means public healthcare services are owned and they are run by the government. But private hospitals or the private healthcare system is run by individuals. Public healthcare services are for everyone because that is public, isn't it? It is for everyone. The rich person can go in public hospital, a poor person can go in private public hospital. Do you get me? So public hospital or public healthcare system is for everyone. But private hospital or private healthcare system is for those who have money. Private hospitals charge very much money, you know. So those who have money only can go there. To get me. Then public healthcare system is from taxes. We give taxes to the government you now. And it is from these taxes that public healthcare system is established. But private hospitals or private healthcare system is from owner's property. This private hospital is owned by a person and this whole hospital, this private hospital is made from that owner's property. Do you get me? Then public healthcare system is very cheap. That means they do not charge very much cost. If you go to a government hospital, the cost or the charge is very cheap or very less. But it's not good. What does it mean? Public hospitals do not provide the most efficient healthcare system. The healthcare system provided by government hospitals or public hospitals are not up to the standard which are offered by private hospitals. The healthcare system by Private hospital is very good, but it is very costly. We have to give very much money or they charge very much for the treatment. So public healthcare system is very cheap, but private healthcare system is very costly. And there is one more difference also. There is the main difference is in the quality of the medicines provided or the quality of the treatment. The public hospitals or the government hospitals do not provide efficient health care system. They are cheap, but it's not up to the standard offered by private hospitals. But private hospitals charge very much from the people. Do you get me? In the beginning, I said that in a democracy, the government should work for the welfare of the people. Health is an important part of the welfare of the people and healthcare facilities should be given to everyone because India is a democracy. In a democracy, there is equality. All people are equal. All are equal. So, equal healthcare facilities should be provided to everyone or everyone should be accessible to good healthcare facilities. Now let us see healthcare and equality in India. India has more private hospitals, more than public hospitals, private hospitals are there in India. Then most of hospitals in India are urbanized. That means most of the hospitals in India are in the cities or the hospitals are urbanized. There are no hospitals in the villages or the rural India has the lack of healthcare facilities or hospitals. Then public healthcare system is cheap but not good. What does it mean? Public healthcare system or the government hospitals are charging very less. It's very cheap. But the standard of the medicines 
standard of the medicines are good but standard of the treatment standard of the healthcare system is not good it's not it's very much tedious we are not interested to go to a government hospital do you get me private healthcare system is costly they charge very much but it's very good their technology their medicines their healthcare system their treatment everything is very good but they are charging very much now read the title again healthcare and equality i said in this democracy and in a democracy there should be equality everyone is equal and so healthcare system should be provided to everyone equally now think in deep think in deep about the title healthcare and equality is healthcare system in india provided equally to everyone no rich people in india go to private hospitals they get better treatment better medicines do you get me but poor people in india cannot go to private hospitals because private hospitals are charging very much poor people can go only to the government hospitals but is the treatment in government hospitals good they are good but it's not up to the standard of private hospitals so healthcare system in india is not provided equally rich people are given priority because they have money and they can go to private hospitals but poor people cannot go to private hospitals they are going to government hospitals but the standard of healthcare system in government hospitals is not good so what can be done what should be done let us see in order to ensure the welfare of the people best or good healthcare facility should be provided to them so there should be excellent healthcare facility in a country isn't it and what can be done to improve the situation in india earlier we saw the situation or the condition of india in india the healthcare system is good but most of the hospitals are privatized and these private hospitals are providing excellent healthcare facilities but they are very costly and so the poor people cannot go there and what about the public healthcare facility in india public healthcare facility is not up to the standard of private hospitals begin me and so the poor people are not able to ensure or, or uh, the poor people are not able to make proper health using the public healthcare facility so what can be done to improve the condition of india the government should take the responsibility the government which rules india should take the responsibility of the healthcare system or the care healthcare facility in india the government should take the responsibility and the government should do something to improve the healthcare system in india let's see it through two examples the first one is kerala experience kerala is a state of india in the year of 1996 in 1996 there was a modification modification there was something modified in the budget of kerala the state budget of kerala was modified and more money or more funds were given to panchayats panchayats are the district now in the state there is state government and in the district there are panchayats the the state government of kerala gave more money to the panchayats of kerala and panchayats invested this money in the healthcare system in the food system in the water system of state do you mean by providing more fund to the panchayats the state government of kerala ensured the welfare of the people more hospitals were built more schools or more anganwadis were built and so proper system was established in kerala better healthcare facilities were brought in kerala 
this was the experience of Kerala and the second experience is Costa Rican approach Costa Rica is a country in South America and Costa Rica is one of the healthiest countries on the world Costa Rica is one of the healthiest countries on the world what makes Costa Rica this much healthy because Costa Rica in the country of Costa Rica there is no army in India there is Indian army no but in Costa Rica there is no army Costa Rica doesn't have an army why because the government of Costa Rica decided not to have an army army needs money no army needs money money should be given to ensure there is proper army system in India so much of money is invested in Indian army and the Costa Rican government decided not to have an army because they wanted to save that money and the Costa Rican government invested that money in the health care system in the sanitation system in the food system in the water system do you get me and the health or the condition of the people in the country of Costa Rica is excellent do you get me the Costa Rican government saved the money by not investing in army and they invested that money in the health care system and so the health care system in Costa Rica is excellent Costa Rica is one of the healthiest countries of the world now you got some idea from Kerala experience and from Costa Rican experience these two are some examples of the government interventions the government intervened and made these changes like that the government should intervene in the health care system in India in the beginning I said the condition of the health care system in India is I stopped there and I will give that answer now the condition of the health care system in India is not up to the standard other countries are having excellent health care system and the health care facility or the health care system in India is not up to the standard it is poor and what should be done most of the hospitals in India are privatized and private hospitals are providing excellent health care services but they are very they are charging very much they are very costly so poor people cannot go there but public hospitals in India are accessible to everyone because they are public but the healthcare system in public hospitals are not up to the standard so the government should do something like the, like the Kerala experience and like the Costa Rican approach the government of India should do something and should improve the healthcare facility or the healthcare system in India India has money, knowledge and experience but healthcare is not available to all listen there is sufficient money with the Indian government and there is sufficient knowledge for the citizens of India and also India has sufficient experience in the healthcare sector but healthcare is not available to all it is available only to the rich persons it is not available to the poor persons so the government of India should take sufficient measures to improve the healthcare system in India. Now all of you read the textbook very well, read the chapter very well, read it and you will have a proper understanding about the healthcare facility or the healthcare system in India. After reading the chapter, think by yourself, think yourself that what all things can the government of India do? to improve the healthcare system in India. We can see you later in the next class. All of you take care. Bye.